a minute. Let a couple people cap get up on here first before we start talking. Give it a minute. Looks like everything's starting to catch up now. All right, Kalinga. My name is Adam Atkinson. I'm a councilman for District 1. With me today is former Mayor Vosberg. Uh, he served on the council for about four years and were the mayor for what, two? Yeah. Two years. Good times back then. Uh, today we're just going to be talking about a few things that have to do with local issues. Um, let's see. <laughs> it's just for entertainment purposes. We're just going to go about 20 to 30 minutes today. It seemed to be better. Uh, to make it a little shorter than we did last time, although last time we had a lot of propositions to get through. So um, here's Mayor Vosberg. Let him introduce yourself, himself. Hello, how are you guys doing today? Thank you uh, um, for watching and hopefully participating. We would do these short little segments, try and get some information out uh, for the people. And uh, you know, if you guys have things that you want us to talk about, make sure you comment, uh, put it in the comments, and uh, we'll try it at the next uh, time to get at that. Yep. Sounds good. So the first issue I believe we're going to talk about is what? We're going to talk about the the ballot harvesting slash ballot boxes, the unofficial boxes. <laughs> okay. Recently, uh, if you heard, the Fresno County Republican Party got in a little bit of trouble because they put out a ballot box uh, and the state was not very happy about that. However, uh, the state ended up having to drop their lawsuit against them because it completely complied with the ballot harvesting laws that the state had already put out yeah so my take on that um, it was a big item in the news um, for a while talking about you know the the GOP was actually being threatened with a lawsuit from the Secretary of State and um, they were talking about that these ballot boxes were not official ballot boxes and they were putting them up at like gun stores and and things of that nature um, but technically, if people were signing the back of the ballot, it said, and I'll kind of like, I don't know, I probably can't see it very well, but there's the back of a ballot. And I'll just read what it says. It says, I authorize the person below to return my ballot. And so if they were signing that and then turning it into the back of, I mean, turning it into the boxes, then that's no different than someone going door to door and picking up those ballots. Um, right. And the, the state really has no standing in it. The state is the one who made this. And it's a little hypocritical for, to say that other people can go pick up ballots, but you can't go drop them off somewhere. Uh, the state seemed to have done it for a to help them in their one-party rule over the state. And now that the Republicans are kind of doing it themselves, they started having a problem with it, which is a little ironic to me. Yeah, well, luckily, the state went ahead and dropped any threat of a lawsuit. Right. And so um, now you can put into those ballot boxes, and they, they will accept them. Um, myself, I will be voting in person at the Keck Community Center, and I believe it starts on the 31st mm -hmm. until the 3rd. Is that, uh, and so, you know, that's what I'm going to do. You can also go to the library, and the library has an official ballot box outside. Um, but for me, I'm going to go in person as I've done for many years and turn my ballot in over there. Yep. And last year I ended up voting um, and dropping it off at the ballot box outside of the library here in town. This year I'll probably be voting in person. Um, it's just a personal preference. Uh, what days did you say that was? I, I believe reading that it was uh, it started on the 31st and it goes in, all the way up until the 3rd. So I believe you'll have uh, three or four days in order to put your ballot in. Do you know what times? I think they open at 8. I'm yeah. pretty sure they open at 8. I don't know what time they close, though. I, I, I don't. I think we have probably some people that are working the polls that may be in this group, and so if they wanted to chime in uh, in the comment section. Um, I know co uh, Mr. Davenport used to do it. He, he may still be oh, doing it. Yeah, so um, hopefully we'll get someone to comment and kind of tell the times. But, uh, you know, you can check on the, 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 the voter information that you got probably along with your ballot that's probably going to tell you exactly where to go as well. Yeah. Well, very good. So that's a, uh, that takes care of that one. Uh, All right. So going to move on to 
we do advertisements every time, and when we're not getting paid for these advertisements, we're doing it because we believe that these places are in the best interest of our of our town. And so the advertisement that I have right now is for Kalinga Press, and uh, shout out uh, www.kalingapress. It's I think it's .org. Is it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and so you can go there and you can sign up in order to uh, receive a copy of the newspaper. Um, Mary Jones has been a very good uh, person and volunteer to be able to do this. Um, she does it mostly, you know, she, I don't think she even gets what it, what it costs in order to reproduce the paper. Right. You know, so I think she's getting donations a lot of times, but uh, make sure to sign up for the Kalinga Press. It's a great resource and asset to Kalinga, and if we don't use it, we won't have it. Right, exactly. And I believe it's only 30 bucks a year. So not too bad for a, a newspaper that comes out every single week. That's less than a dollar an issue. Okay. So let's uh, move on to, uh, and I'll let you go first. Uh, people are talking about whether or not uh, you know schools should open back up and on the timeline that they should open up, if they should open up uh, soon or if we should wait till January or if we should op op wait until next year. What do you think about that? Uh, personally, I feel they should open back up. Um, it's... It's hard to say because, it, you know, you have some teachers who may have their own health problems and they really shouldn't be exposed to COVID-19. But statistically speaking, kids are handling this pretty pretty well as long as they don't have any underlying conditions. Um, at one time, we had 38, 40,000 kids who had been infected with no deaths. Unfortunately, I think there's been two or three in the state of California. And probably in the 100,000 person range for, for kids to have this disease. Um, this, <laughs> I've always said that I thought I could be a teacher until I started doing this, and now I know that that absolutely is not the case. Uh, I'm not a good teacher. This long distance learning doesn't seem to be working very well for me. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I think kids should be back in school with protection for the teachers. I think there's plenty of things that we can do for that. Um, that's that's my own personal opinion. I'm not knocking the school district for not having in-person schooling because there's a lot of things that go along with that, and it's kind of out of their hands as well. So that's what I feel about it. So I have a little bit different take, but I do feel, as a parent, I feel similar. Um, if I was in the situation of the school board, though, I would um, I would feel like that, you know, we've been distance learning, and there, there's now talk of a, a hybrid model. And so first, I would say, you know, we have to look at the safety of the students, the safety of the, of the, the teachers and of the staff and then of the parents of the kids. And, you know, and with all that being said, I would say that um, it's probably a good idea to wait at least until January. And the reason is, is because it's going to cost, there's, you know, a couple different reasons, but one of them is it's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of uh, what I call human capital, which means that they're going to have to spend money on testing. They're going to have to spend money on PPE. They're going to have to spend money on blended learning to train the teachers how to do that blended learning model. Um, the teachers are already stressed out and, you know, I couldn't, I watched my wife do it and uh, her friends and it's been very testing on all of them. And I really, really appreciate all the teachers and all the admins and the staff that's been putting in all the time uh, to do that. And with that being said, um, I just think it'd be more consistent if they waited. And the reason is because if we push everyone back to school right now and we say, hey, it's time to go back to school, you know, um, there's gonna be a transition Kids are going to have to learn to do things differently. Staff's going to have to learn to do things differently. And I think that, you know, personally, if it was up to me, I would say let's wait till the next year, um, to be honest. And I know that's not what a lot of people want to hear. I know a lot of people have jobs. I know a lot of people have to go to work, you know, myself included. And it's really tough. Um, but I think in, for the kids, for the sake of a lot of the kids, that consistency in doing what we're doing, um, you know, but that's just my personal opinion. I understand that there's lots of people out there that want to send their kids back, mm -hmm. like immediately, like they want their kids back tomorrow. Yeah. You know, so that's the thing. <laughs> In a couple hours, I'll be ready to send mine back. <laughs> <laughs> and people think we agree on absolutely everything. Right. <laughs> you, should, you should see our conversations sometimes. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the local movie theater. Um, look, people are always talking about how there's nothing to do in Kalinga. Um, the one thing that there is to do is, is the theater. 
And if we want to keep that theater, we better start going to it and uh, giving, giving that theater some of our money. Time for us to put our money where our mouth is. Um, this weekend, or the weekend, uh, Friday the 30th and Saturday the 31st, there's going to be a haunted theater. That's going to go from 4 to 8. I believe it doesn't cost much. It doesn't cost anything, I'm sorry. There's also going to be a Trunks Retreats in the back. So both theaters are going to be used for this haunted theater. I think it'd be great to get the kids out there, uh, check it out, and also make a donation while you're there. Uh, he will be taking donations. Uh, I believe I believe entry is free, but you may want to check with that. And also make sure you buy something while you're there. Give, uh, give the theater some money. They need it. Yeah, I, I concur. I think that, um, you know, we always, after the fact, we always say, well, we wish we could have done more. Mm -hmm. You know, when we lost our Kmart, a lot of people were saying, hey, I wish, you know, we could have shopped there more. And we, if we would have shopped there more, maybe we, they'd still be here. Um, sadly, with Kmart, I don't think that was the case because they were a corporation yeah. that had their own path set for them. But in this situation, it is the case. We need to get out there and we need to help the theater. We need, in fact, we need to help all of our local businesses. We need to start utilizing eating out, doing things like that in order to uh, eating in if, if, if we can. That way that, uh, you know, they're, they're waiters and their servers and whatnot. But right. specifically for the theater, um, they're the ones that, that I understand that are in the... Uh, did they get... Um, do you know if they if they got to take advantage of the, of the business, the small business loan for the city or no, for the grant? No, not yet. No, no. Uh -uh. no. They, uh, they. I don't know the all particulars, but I don't think he was eligible because of a, um, a PPP loan, or I don't remember now. But see, that's 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 the there's thing. There's too many restrictions on that. So that's the thing is in you know in, in these things, a lot of businesses, especially the smaller ones, are not able to get in there and to qualify for that stuff. And there's restrictions that the cities are put in from the counties and things that the counties right. are put in from the state and from the state to the feds, and so. You know, let's get out there and really try and support the theater. Yeah, let's try and do what we can to keep to keep. Uh, and, and Scott has been amazing. He's been doing a lot for the community. Always does. Always, always. will. Um, he supports us all the time. Now it's time for us to start supporting him in that theater. He also employs several people too, so they like their jobs, I'm sure. Um, all right, that's that's it on that. Uh, next, I guess we're going to talk about the debate with. Well, we're going to talk about David Valadeo and our congressman. Um, Cox uh, they had a debate recently I don't know if anyone caught it but I'll give my feelings on it and my feelings on each of them without saying who I'm going to vote for oh perfect <laughs> <laughs> well and that's probably a smart thing for you to do <laughs> yeah. you know uh, it's, sitting council members and, and you know what not we need help from everybody yes. uh, statewide and so that's probably a great idea um, I watched the debate I watched the entire thing. I thought it was great. I was super happy that um, that we got that opportunity to mm -hmm. listen to both sides. And I, but I tell you, I was really amazed at how it came down. What they did was they played the attack ads. <laughs> they didn't actually play them. What they did was they talked their way through them. Right. And so they asked each person what they thought about the attack ads uh, to the other side, and they talked with each person about why those attack ads they thought. Were, were valid and I thought that um, by listening to them that Valdeo had the best responses I think that uh, even the tough questions he answered and he did his best and he did not try and dodge and I think um, on the other end looking at it uh, that just my personal opinion that Cox tried to dodge every little thing that he could when talking about the ethics complaints and talking about those type of things, all he did was was divert attention to something like, hey, well, what has David done? And how much has, has Valdeo done? And to me, when you can't answer those straight questions, um, you know, it doesn't stand too much for your character. Uh, I'm guessing you guys know which way I'll be voting. <laughs> I voted Valdeo last time, and ballot harvesting came in, and he lost. Mm -hmm. Amazingly, but it was a very small amount. What, what was the amount? Do you remember what the amount was? It was, I believe, 800 votes, somewhere around that, somewhere around that range, 800 votes. Um, when when you talk about some of these people as a council person, you kind of got to be careful about what you say because you want to work for these people, no matter if it's Cox or if it's Valadeo. You may have to go to them one day 
and um, ask them for, for their help. And sometimes they're not likely to help you if you said some things about them. Um, for instance, Joaquin Arambula, our assemblyman, me and him don't get along very well. And he has refused any kind of help whatsoever. Um, so, in this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off both of them. Um, I'll tell you my experiences with both of them. Um, both of them have been positive in my experience. I will tell you that when the governor decided to withhold our funds, our two hundred twelve thousand dollars, I did call um, Congressman Cox, T.J. Cox, and I did call David Valadeo. Um, Valadeo responded pretty much instantly and came down here. Uh, he spoke with our small business owners. Uh, we had a meeting in City Hall for quite a while. He, he spoke, he listened, he uh, asked them questions, they asked him questions, and it was great. Um, Valadeo didn't reply. Uh, from what I heard later on is that Valadeo, I mean Valadeo, um, Cox didn't reply. What I heard later on is that Cox uh, said that he never got my phone message, which is which can happen. He's got a lot of staff in Selma and Washington, D.C., and he's very busy, so... I take him at his word for that. Um, he did end up getting a hold of us recently. We did have a meeting with the mayor pro tem and I and the city manager to talk about trying to get some of that money back. Um, he was a very nice guy. He seemed willing to help. Uh, met his wife too, very nice lady. Um, also Valadeo was a very nice guy as well. His campaign manager was great, helping us uh, get access to him. Um, whoever wins, I plan on working with them to help bring more funds to Kalinga and also help us fight for the money that is rightfully ours from the state. So let me, um, so I, I met TJ Cox as well. He's been to Kalinga multiple times. Uh, I should say, I also think he's a very nice person. Uh, in talking with him, he has intentions in helping. I think that's the thing is that both of these people have are the intentions in, in helping. And so it is good to keep open communications and um, not to, you know, there's, there's really, there, there's politics and then there's what can we do to help our city, right? right? And I'm, I'm happy that, that you've taken the approach of, hey, you know what, this is not politics, this is helping our yeah. city. And so I hope that he gets in, and I hope, uh, I mean, I hope David gets in, but if not, I hope that you guys continue to work with Cox and that he can get some of that money turned back to us. Hey, w didn't, we did receive a letter from Congress, right? Was it a letter from Congress or from some of the congressmen talking about the, the CARES Act money? Uh, we actually sent a letter to them, and that's how we got TJ Cox to respond to us. Um, we sent it to him and to some of the other delegation from California and he ended up responding so it was great to get a response from him um, no one else has responded to us uh, Joaquin Arambula uh, I've sent him plenty of emails and <laughs> messages on his phone uh, he won't respond I did catch him on Facebook live and his only response to me was comply or don't get any money and I don't think he re re he uh, liked my response back to him after that um, Senator Caballero has not done anything to try and help us so I'm talking about initially like when you guys were talking about the CARES Act money and we were kind of going uh, when, when we we're listening to you guys go around about why we weren't getting it mm -hmm. I, I remember that there was a letter that was sent to the city and it was signed by some people there was a letter sent by seven or eight congressmen to the governor oh okay and uh, telling them he needs to release the money because he's holding it um, basically that it was illegal for him to hold it and that uh, in the CARES Act it says the state cannot put any um, issues on the money they can't they have to give us the money they can't stop the money basically well and I just I just want to get clarity on that because I know a lot of people think that you know Kalinga is operating outside of the boundaries of what the law is and I don't think that's the case I think that you Kalinga is doing its best that they can uh, to comply right. just because the city doesn't have a an order that mirrors the governor's order mm -hmm. and that we aren't enforcing his order I mean that's really up to, to him to enforce right, right. And, and it's not a one-size-fits-all approach I mean I wish the governor would come out here and look it's not something that what works in San Francisco isn't gonna work in Kalinga what works in Kalinga isn't gonna work in LA and so forth and so on one of the things I would say is that you know some businesses have decided to open and others have not and when we look at our numbers per person, 
Kalinga has the lowest COVID rate per person in all of Fresno County. Uh, we also have the lowest number of active cases per thousand people in the population in all of Fresno County. So Kalinga is doing their job. The governor is withholding our money because he doesn't like what we're doing. Uh, not because, for no other reason. It, it's basically he's withholding the money because of his ego and nothing else. Yeah. Well, we can hope that uh, the whoever gets elected carries our message on. Mm -hmm. And that uh, if that's uh, Valadeo, then great. And if it's Cox, then great. And, you know, it, it amazes me because I've spoken to the governor before. And when you talk to him, he always has answers, <laughs> you know. But, yeah. you know, maybe there's just a ploy for him, hey, come and visit Kalinga. Wouldn't that be amazing if the governor actually came to Kalinga? It would be nice. Uh, it would be nice for him to get here besides something like a natural disaster, like an earthquake or something. Um, I, I said I wasn't going to talk bad about any politician, and I start talking bad about all these politicians. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Uh, Kalinga's going to be fine. We're, we're, we're doing well financially. We seem to be doing okay. We still don't know the full effects of what COVID has done to our revenue, uh, but we have had some businesses come online that is also bringing in quite a bit of revenue. So we're gonna be fine, uh, $212,000, it's like 1% of our economy or something, our budget, we're gonna be okay. Perfect. All right, so we're really looking for, you know, context of what people wanna talk about and what people wanna hear about. Um, if you're interested in, you know, coming on with us and chatting yeah. we're looking for people that that want to to come on and uh discuss issues and then we're also looking for what issues you guys want and so i think sometime in the middle of the month we're gonna put some information out asking yeah. to kind of remind people we asked last time but of course we have we should remind people right and i don't i still don't know how often we're gonna do this bi-weekly monthly weekly i don't know but uh if you have questions Put it out there. We'll uh, we'll try and make that a subject of our next meeting and our next live stream, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, so that's all I got for today. Uh, don't forget that we have an election coming up for local candidates. Uh, District two is going to be Jim Horn and um, Andrea Rosas. District four is going to be Kevin Donaldson, Manny Ramirez, and Ruth Thurman. They all have stuff out there on Facebook. Check them out. Make sure that you are educated before you just go out and vote for any person for the council. As, as, as weird as it is, council is pretty important in our lives. You know, a lot of politics is local, and it shouldn't be a, a, uh, something that's taken lightly where, oh, I know that person, or I like that person, so I'm going to vote for him or her. So make sure you go out there and you learn about them and, and make, a, make a good choice. And in closing, I'd just like to say that no matter, we have some good candidates. We really do. We're blessed with good candidates this time. I honestly believe that whoever gets elected, that we're gonna have good people because I believe that they, every one of them has the intention of doing well for the city. Right. And so, you know, all, anyone who gets elected, I will be content with and be happy with and will be willing to work with trying to push forward, you know, agendas that will help the city of Kalinga and, um, you know, get out there and vote. Do some research. Find out about the people that 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 uh, that are in your district. Uh, contact them. Call them on the phone. They should be willing. Most of them, I think, are willing to to talk to people. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that makes a big difference. And you know, this is your town, and it's our town. And if we don't vote for uh, people that that are going to do well for us, which in this case, I think pretty much all of them are, but. Uh, do your best to get out there and talk to them and, and try and find out. Yeah. And I, I don't got any issues with any of the candidates. They all seem pretty good, and they all seem like they care and want Klinga to be a, a better place. I'm looking forward to working with them in the next two years because it's going to be a completely different council, and one without a lander on it, which is very strange. It hasn't happened in 20-something <laughs> years. So it's going to be a different council, and it's going to be a young council too, a newer council. Uh, I'm going to be the second most uh have the second most um what's the word i'm looking for seniority. tenure seniority yeah. whatever and i don't even have three years in so it's it's gonna make for for some new changes um that's all i got for today you got anything else nope just uh do yourself uh, a favor go out there and vote do the country a favor make sure you vote 
uh, the go to the either the Keck Community Center or drop off spot at the library. Make sure your vote is counted. And uh, don't forget, if you got any questions you want us to answer or want topics you want us to talk about, leave a comment. We'll try and get to it next time. All right, y'all. We'll see you later. See you guys later.